uh, thanks for your introduction. I am Xin Tao, uh, currently a PhD student from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. And this is a joint work with University of Toronto, Uber Research, MacV, and YouTube Lab. Uh, the target of video super resolution is to increase the resolution of videos with rich details. It is an old and fundamental problem that has been started since several decades ago. And the video SR enables many applications, such as high definition video generation from low resolution sources, and uh, video enhancement with details. In this example, uh, characters on the roof and the textures of the tree in SR result are much clearer than input. And also, it can benefit text or object recognition in low quality civilians videos. In this example, numbers on the car become recognizable only in the super resolved result. Uh, previously, lots of work has been proposed in super resolution. Uh, we list several representative ones here. Uh, although video SR has long been started, there are still remaining challenges in this task. Uh, the most important one is effectiveness. How to make good use of multiple frames? Uh, as shown in this example, objects in neighboring frames are not aligned. And in some, large, in, and in some extreme cases, there even exist large motion or occlusion, which are very hard to handle. So are multiple frames really useful or harmful to super resolution? On the other hand, are the generated details real details? Uh, we all know CNN-based methods incorporate e external data. Using only one single frame, uh, single image SR methods can also generate sharp structures. In this example, on the right-hand side, uh, one single image SR method generates some clear window patterns on the building. Uh, but they are far from real on the left. The problem is, Details from external data may not be true for this particular input image. Uh, there are also model issues in current methods. Um, for all recent uh, CNN-based SR methods, model parameters are fixed for certain scaling factors or number of frames. If you want to change the scaling factors, you need to change network configuration and uh, train another one. Uh, and the most traditional video SR methods involve intensive parameter tuning and may be very slow. All the issues mentioned above prevent them from practical usage. The goals of our methods are as follows. Uh, we are trying to make better use of subpixel motion between frames and produce high quality results with real details. We also hope the designed framework be fully scalable in terms of input image size, scaling factors, and frame numbers. Here's one video example. Characters, numbers, and textures are hard to recognize in bicubic results, and our results are much better and clearer. Uh, this is a comparison. Uh, due to time limit, here we briefly describe our method. Audience, are welcome to our poster session uh, for more details. Uh, our method contains three components. Uh, the first module is a motion estimation network. Uh, this module takes two low-resolution images as input, and uh, it outputs a low-resolution motion field. The second module is newly designed. We call it a subpixel motion compensation layer, SPMC layer. This module takes as input the ice low-resolution frame and also the estimated uh, uh, motion field. It outputs a high-resolution image. Unlike previous methods, this layer simultaneously achieves resolution enhancement and the motion compensation which can better keep subpixel information in frames. In the last stage, we design a detailed fusion network to combine all the frames. Uh, here we use encoder-decoder structure in this module since it is proved very effective in image reg regression tasks. Uh, skip connections are used for better convergence. Uh, the important change is that we insert a ConvLSTM inside this network. It is a natural choice since we are handling sequential inputs and hoping to utilize temporal information. Uh, this conveyor STM considers in, uh, information from pre previous time step and the past hidden state to the next time step. Uh, our proposed framework has the advantage of fully scalability. Um, input videos may have different sizes in practice uh, since our network is fully convolutional. 
so it can handle, uh, handle this naturally. Uh, when dealing with different scaling factors, previous networks need to change network parameters. Our framework is different since the resolution enhancement increase happens in SPMC layer and this layer is parameter free. Uh, this property enables us to use one single model configuration to handle all scaling factors, including non-integer values. Uh, for practical systems, we may want to choose the number of frames in testing phase in order to achieve balance between quality and uh, efficiency. Our framework uses ConfLSTM to handle frames in a sequential way. Uh, so therefore, it can accept arbitrary temporal lengths. Uh, we do analysis to evaluate our method. Uh, first, are, all, are our recovered details real? Uh, here we use three identi identical frames as input to our network. The information contained in this input is no more than one single low resolution image. As expected, although sharper, the output contains no more details and the characters and logo are still unrecognizable. Uh, however, if we, if we take three consecutive frames from the video as input, our network produces much better results. Characters and logos are very clear to be read. This experiment proves that the sharp structures recovered come from real information uh, of inputs rather than from external information in the network. Oh, here's our result. Uh, we will be safe to trust the SR result. Uh, in the next experiment, we do ablation study of our SPMC layer. Uh, we substitute this layer with a baseline module. Uh, that is a backward, backward warping followed by upsampling. Uh, this baseline method can also compensate motion and increase resolution. It is widely used in previous CNN-based uh, methods. Uh, in this example, the tiles on the roof contain severely forced structures due to aliasing. With our designed SPMC layer, the structures of tires in the result are very faithful to the ground truth. We believe only by properly handling motion in subpixel precision can we recover good results. Uh, we further compare with current state of the arts. Uh, this is a bicubic interpolated version of input. The, window, the windows and glass uh, of the building are severely blurred. Uh, the result of Bayes and SR is sharp, but the structures are still missing. Draft ensemble SR recover a few details, but with artifacts. Uh, one recent CNN-based VSR net produces smooth result. Uh, visually, our results is much better. The edges of the buildings and windows are easy to distinguish. Uh, we then go back to input and then our results. Uh, the changes are obvious. Uh, we compare running time with most of the current methods. Uh, BSNSR methods need two hours to produce uh, one frame as reported in their paper. Uh, MFSR method requires 10 minutes per frame. Uh, draft ensemble SR requires eight minutes. Uh, VSR net needs 40 seconds per frame. Our framework is much faster since all components can be efficiently computed uh, on GPU. It requires 0.19 seconds using neighboring five frames and it can be further accelerated to 0.14 seconds if we use three frames. Uh, here we show more video results. In this first result, our method works very well, especially on the edges of building. And in the next result, tiles of the temple and the calves on the lamp are mostly recovered. Uh, in the last result, textures become uh, very clear. Uh, in summary, we propose a new end-to-end CNN-based framework for video super-resolution, which is fully scalable. Our framework introduces a new SPMC layer that can better handle inter-frame motion. Uh, and our result pr produces high quality results with fast speed. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Any questions?
have a quick question. So you applied your super resolution to some video data uh, in RGB. Would it be possible to extend to RGBD video? Uh, I think that's possible. Uh, in experiments, we just apply to the uh, illuminance channel only. So I think it's, uh, it's direct, direct to apply to four-channel image. Yes. Thanks. Thanks.